Hello there, I'm Rob Mungovern. I'm Conservation Officer for the Wild Trout Trust, Eastern Region, and I'm here on the banks of the River Mel in Meldriff. The River Mel is a small chalk stream. This section had been rather sort of forgotten about. So you can see behind us, lots of trees, but these hawthorn trees were completely overcast by brambles. So this part of the River Mel had actually almost been hidden for 20 years. So the first phase of the work that we're able to secure here through the Cambridge Water Company's Pebble Fund was finding the stream again. And this task of cutting back about 40 metres of dense bramble was really beyond the local group. That's the River Mel Restoration Group. So it's fantastic to actually pay some tree surgeons to come in and do this hard graft work. Then, after the bird breeding season had largely passed, we came in with volunteers and we re-established new margins of the River Mel. You can see here, using hazel faggot bundles, we've put the sinuosity back into this stream and we've used a lot of this cut bramble as woody backfill. If you look to the sides, you can see it's all been trampled into the soft mud to form new margins. So we have basically refound this stream, let the light in so it can grow new marginal plants. We've created sinuosity so it can transport its fine sediment much better, shift and sort that sand as it moves down the river corridor here. And later on into the summer, or maybe early autumn, once this stream has flushed itself through a bit better, we're going to be putting something like 20 tonnes of gravel back into this stream. And what that's really important for is for fish spawning habitat. It's not just the wild brown trout that will spawn on clean gravel in this river. We've got very good connection to the River Ree, which is maybe about a kilometre downstream. So we get gudgeon, we get dace, minnows, and potentially even chub might come up here and use this as a spawning tributary as a nursery ground for those fish to drop back down and support the fish communities in the River Ree. So taking care of little headwater streams like this is really important if we're going to help our main rivers. This is just a very quick kick sample here in this part of the mill and it's really pleasing to see good numbers of gamma of shrimp. They are so important for breaking down organic matter and then provide food for all manner of fish. Let's see what else I pull out in my hand here. We've got the odd cased caddis, there goes another gamorous. wriggling. That is a case less caddis larvae and they're never indicator of good water quality. They spin little silk webs and catch small organic particles drifting in the current so they're actually indicators of good water quality. Trying to find the mayflies but of course we are just at the end of the mayfly season so most of the larvae would have metamorphosized into the proper adults and be on the wings. But when I first lifted the sample, I saw one <laughs> small mayfly larvae, but where on earth is it now? There, there. Nope, I didn't want to crush it. It's swimming there. That little fella there is, was, a mayfly larvae. They're very delicate, so I didn't want to grab it. All indicative of a healthy stream and lots of food for fish. So the mel here, healthy little chalk stream, just needs the light, reforming of the banks and getting some sinuosity, making that river wiggle once again. One of the main problems that's facing our small Cambridge chalk streams is low flow. We've just gone through one of our wettest winters but if you look here at the, the banks of the Mel, you can see there in the ivy, since I was last here in May, starting to form this work, the levels have dropped by, I'd estimate, at least 10 centimetres already. Well, where's that water gone? We've got heat come through now. We've got trees coming to leaf and drawing water through evapotranspiration. But of course, we're all water users. We're using water to water our gardens when our water butts dry out. My six water butts in my own garden have just run dry. I've watered some of my vegetables this morning, but we need to think about how much water we use. Is it really necessary to refill that paddling pool? Is it necessary to water the grass? Is it necessary to clean your car? Please think twice about how much water you're using, because here in Cambridgeshire, much of that water is also coming from our natural environments. The more we use, the less there could be to flow into our chalk rivers.